This is At The Public Library, the video source for news and information about the San Francisco Public Library System. This month's show features a look at exhibitions throughout the main library, an invitation to the many literary events being held this month, and in honor of the 80th anniversary of the Armistice, a special film series commemorating the Great War as well as listings for children, teens, and adults at the Public Library. The Library has a full slate of literary events lined up for November, beginning with our second annual Literary Quiz Show on Thursday, November 5th in the Corette Auditorium. The show pits authors, librarians, and booksellers against each other in a battle of literary facts and trivia. The host for the evening will be Howard Junker, editor of Zizziba. That's 6.30 p.m. on Thursday, November 5th. On Saturday, November 7th, the library celebrates the 9th Annual San Francisco Book Festival with Bay Area Book Criticism a panel discussion about the art and science of reviewing, presented by the National Book Critics Circle. Moderated by San Francisco Magazine senior editor Jonathan Keats, the panel includes editors and reviewers from the San Francisco Chronicle, Mother Jones Magazine, the San Jose Mercury News, the Bay Guardian, and Salon Online Magazine. Stop by for Bay Area Book Criticism on November 7th at 2 p.m. in the Main Library's Corette Auditorium. The library welcomes award-winning San Francisco author Adam Hochschild to discuss his latest book, King Leopold's Ghost, a story of greed, terror, and heroism in colonial Africa, on Tuesday, November 10th at 6 p.m. in the Corette Auditorium. Through slides, excerpts, and discussion, Hochschild will revisit King Leopold's acquisition and exploitation of the Congo and the historic human rights campaign it inspired. A book signing will follow the presentation. The Alvarado Project and the library's Filipino American Center present investigative humorist Emil Guillermo to the Corret Auditorium on Thursday, November 12th at 6 p.m. The evening begins with an introduction by author Ishmael Reed, followed by Guillermo, who will read from and discuss his new book, Amok, at Large in Asian America, a compilation of essays from his syndicated column on society and politics. A book signing will follow the presentation. So check out the many literary events planned during November at the library. Our quick tour of some of the exhibitions now taking place in the main library begins with a look at the Hand Bookbinders of California 26th Annual Members Exhibition, now on display in the Sixth Floor Skylight Gallery through December 31st. The exhibition, co-sponsored by the Book Arts and Special Collections Center of the San Francisco Public Library, features the work of amateurs as well as internationally recognized bookbinders. Since the late 70s, the Hand Bookbinders of California has sponsored exhibitions of members' works for many years in the front windows of John Hal Books near Union Square, until this famous shop closed its doors. After a number of years at other venues throughout the Bay Area, the Hand Bookbinders show was welcomed home by the San Francisco Public Library, where exhibitions have taken place since 1993. Next stop, the Steve Silver Music Center on the main library's fourth floor, where the Steve Silver Beach Blanket Babylon exhibition is now on display through March 1999. This lively and colorful exhibit commemorates 25 years of the Beach Blanket Babylon extravaganza, which first opened on June 7, 1974, in the back room of the Savoy Tivoli Restaurant in North Beach. 
Steve Silver's Beach Blanket Babylon moved on to Club Fugazi, where it has become the longest running musical review in American theater history. Included in the exhibition are costumes, drawings, photographs, and other memorabilia from Steve Silver's personal collection. The exhibition is a tribute to Steve Silver, who died in 1995, and to the San Francisco landmark he created, Beach Blanket Babylon. Moving on now to the third floor of the main library for a look at Sylvester Metamorphosis, from Coquette to Disco Diva, on display in the James C. Hormel Gay and Lesbian Center through December 30th. Curated by the Gay and Lesbian Historical Society of Northern California, the exhibit includes photographs, costumes, album covers, and other memorabilia chronicling the life of the influential disco diva who epitomized San Francisco gay life in the 70s. In conjunction with the Sylvester exhibition, a slideshow with music that traces the life and times of this influential San Francisco icon will be presented on Sunday, November 8th at 2 p.m. in the Corette Auditorium in the main library. Also on the third floor, the exhibition Chinatown Panorama, a collection of photographs by local photographer Lori Ames, is now on display in the Chinese Center through the end of November. Ames, whose photos often appear in the Bay Guardian weekly newspaper, captures daily life in Chinatown through black and white wide-angle panoramas that are both striking and cinematic in nature. And the last stop on our main library exhibition tour brings us to the Jouette Gallery on the lower level of the main library for a final invitation to visit the exhibition Through My Father's Eyes, pioneers of the San Francisco Filipino American community. This wonderful collection of photographs taken in the 40s and 50s by Filipino photographer Ricardo Alvarado captures Bay Area Filipino Americans participating in the life of their communities through dances, banquets, baptisms, weddings, and everyday community events. The exhibition affirms the Filipino presence in America as workers and business owners. The historical photographs are interesting to view for how well Alvarado captured the spirit and feel of the times. The Through My Father's Eyes exhibition runs through the end of November. November 11th is the 80th anniversary of the Armistice, which brought an end to the First World War. To commemorate this historic occasion, the San Francisco Public Library and the Institute for Historical Study present the Great War Film Series, Saturday afternoons beginning on November 14th. These films reflect the shock and disillusionment wrought by the destruction of the war. The films will begin at 1 p.m. in the Corette Auditorium and will be introduced by a member of the Institute for Historical Study, a nonprofit organization dedicated to making history accessible to the general public. The Great War film series begins with Barbed Wire, a 1927 silent movie which tells the story of the conflict between loyalty to country and to one another. West Front 1918, a German film made in 1930, follows on November 21st. This film depicts the boredom and horror of life in the trenches and the courage of ordinary soldiers on both sides. The series closes on November 28th with a 1938 remake of The Dawn Patrol. In addition to using original aerial combat footage, this film also features a star-studded cast including Basil Rathbone, Errol Flynn, David Niven, and Donald Crisp. That's the Great War Film Series, Saturday afternoons at 1 p.m. in the Corette Auditorium. And in recognition of those who served and gave their lives in America's wars, the library presents Remembering Veterans Day, 
an exhibition showcasing some of the many books about war and the threat of war. Remembering Veterans Day will be on display through November 30th at the Grove Street entrance to the main library. Also in conjunction with the Great War film series and the Remembering Veterans Day exhibit, don't miss the Palace of the Legion of Honor exhibition, Picasso and the War Years, 1937 through 1945, on view through January 3rd. For your information, the library system will be closed in honor of Veterans Day on Wednesday, November 11th, and will also be closed for two days, November 26th and 27th, in observance of Thanksgiving. The San Francisco Public Library Full Commission meets on the first Tuesday and the third Thursday of every month at 5.30 p.m. in the Coret Auditorium on the lower level of the main library. SCORE, the Service Corps of Retired Executives, is a national organization of retired business executives that provide technical and managerial counseling and training to people starting or operating a small business. SCORE will be offering free one-hour business counseling sessions every Wednesday from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. in a study room of the Business, Science, and Technology Department on the fourth floor of the main library. If you've got some legal questions, the Volunteer Legal Services Program of the San Francisco Bar Association offers a free legal advice and referral clinic the second Saturday of each month in the main library's Latino-Hispanic Community Meeting Room at 10 a.m. The library is offering free workshops about obtaining American citizenship. Sponsored by Centro Legal de la Raza, the citizenship workshops are on the first Saturday of the month from 11.30 a.m. to 1 p.m. at the Excelsior Branch Library and every fourth Saturday in the main library's Latino-Hispanic Community Meeting Room from 10 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. All the workshops are conducted in Spanish and English. That's for your information. Dial a Story is a telephone service offering poems, rhymes, riddles, songs, and stories for children. Presented by the Office of Children and Youth Services of the San Francisco Public Library, Dial a Story is offered in three languages, English, Spanish, and Cantonese. For English stories, dial 437-4880. For Spanish stories, dial 437-4882. And for Cantonese stories, dial 437-4883. That's Dial a Story from the San Francisco Public Library. Book Buddies are volunteers who read and tell stories to hospitalized children. The service, which is offered at four San Francisco hospitals, is funded by the Friends of the San Francisco Public Library, and volunteers are trained by San Francisco Public Library staff. The next Book Buddies training will be held on Saturday, November 21st at the Main Library. If you are interested in becoming a Book Buddy, call 557-4256 for more information. Word for Word Performing Arts Company presents a vibrant version of Wiley, His Mama, and the Hairy Man from the book The People Could Fly at three branch libraries this month. Catch the show at the Western Edition branch on Wednesday, November 4th at 3.30 p.m. At the Merced branch on Saturday, November 7th at 3 p.m. Or at the Chinatown branch on Tuesday, November 10th at 4 p.m. A free copy of The People Could Fly will be mysteriously given away at each show. So come test your luck with Word for Word. And as our thoughts turn to Thanksgiving later in November, it's a good time to reflect on the part played by Native Americans in our history. Three branch libraries invite Gloria June Suki and Sherry Lane Suki from Oneida Star Productions for Native American Living History Through Dance and Oral History. Join them at the Eureka Valley Harvey Milk Branch on November 17th at 10.30 a.m. 
The Anza Branch, also on November 17th at 3.30 p.m. Or at the Ocean View Branch on November 18th at 4 p.m. You gotta be cool on the inside too. Last month, hundreds of Mission District school children helped kick off the Mission Library Fund campaign with a parade along Mission Street that included clowns, mounted police, and a host of community leaders. The parade eventually made its way to the Mission Branch Library at 24th and Bartlett Streets, where the children were greeted by Mayor Willie Brown. The Mission Library is currently undergoing seismic structural renovation and interior remodeling, which is being funded by city bond monies. The bonds by law do not, however, provide funds for other building enhancements, such as computers, new furniture, and bookshelves. The Friends of the Library and the Library Foundation are attempting to raise the funds needed to furnish the Mission Branch through the Mission Library Fund Campaign. It takes money, and it takes lots of money. The capital campaign, the partnership between the private sector and the public sector makes this kind of a structure a reality. And so we all need to invest just a little bit. Nickels, dimes, quarters, pennies, dollars, any amount of money towards the capital improvement program, it can only enhance the available furniture, the fixtures, and the other kinds of things that can't and doesn't come from public dollars. I'm just delighted that so many people have seen fit to do that to date, and so many will continue to do it in the future. The investment is worth every single solitary penny. Thank you very much. The Wells Fargo Foundation presented a check for $50,000 to Mayor Brown and urged others in the business community to join in the effort. At the Public Library is pleased to present the following video, which was produced to assist in the Mission Branch Library fundraising effort. Hi, my name is Cheech Marin, and I want to tell you about the Mission Library, located in the heart of San Francisco's Mission District at 24th and Bartlett. The Friends of the Library and the Library Foundation need our help to raise $320,000 for new furniture, computers, bookshelves, and other improvements to make the Mission Library a very cool place. $4.2 million of public money will make the building earthquake safe and space efficient, as well as adding an elevator for disabled access. When finished, the Mission Branch Library will be an even greater neighborhood treasure, providing knowledge, information, and reading enjoyment to the Mission District community. The Mission Branch especially, since there's a large collection of Spanish books, the, um, the people that live in, the, in this neighborhood can really benefit. And also Chinese collection. Uh, there is a large collection of Chinese books. And my kids go to Chinese immersion school. So they are learning how to read in Chinese. And sometimes we check books out in Chinese here. And we speak Spanish at home, so we check books in Spanish. And of course, we check books in English. So it's like a, a treasure here in the city? Well, I work in an after-school program, so during the summer is really the only time that we can bring the kids to the library on a regular basis, and it's, I love bringing them to the library because when I come and pick up books for them, it's really reflecting my taste, but when I bring them, they, the, just seeing them get all excited about what, things that aren't even, I'm not that into, like the sports books and the riddle books and all that stuff, and I, I love seeing them be able to um, just go into the shelves and they get all excited, oh, we have this book in the room. If you looked at me uh, back then, or maybe even now, um, 
you wouldn't necessarily know uh, or realize that I was a person who was uh, interested in, in a lot of different ideas and in, in books and whatnot, you know. Um, I, I dressed for my environment, you know. I looked like a hood and um, an intellectual hood, but I was nonetheless, that's the way I looked. Um, but the, the library, the librarians, the people that worked there, they were always so helpful. They never uh, judged me for who maybe they may have thought I was. And, and they were always very uh, uh, patient, and they took time out to uh, show me how to, uh, you know, where to look for books and, and the various things that I was interested in. Oh, y yo eh, eh, exhorto, ¿verdad?, a la comunidad a que más que nada cuidemos, <laughs> cuidemos la biblioteca, cuidemos los libros, todo lo que hay aquí, porque es, el, es para el bien de nuestros hijos, ¿verdad? Y, y los libros son de una ayuda grandísima para el futuro de cada uno de nuestros hijos, porque muchos no tenemos los medios para comprar esos libros. O sea que cada libro para mí es valioso. This is, uh a very important and valuable resource for this community and that uh, it deserves the support of everybody in the mission. Uh, not only the people who live here, but the people who come in and earn a living here, uh, the merchants, uh, the theater people, uh, the art people. I think we all have a vested interest in, in libraries, even if we're not using this particular library or even if we own our own libraries now, we need to recognize the importance of a library to a community. The mission is the place where we get our employees. The mission is uh, the first base for training for our employees. And uh, the, uh, having a viable library um, is the basis of knowledge here in the mission. So we feel that it's very important for the business community to get behind supporting uh, the rebuilding of the library. The library is a true means of integration in this city. People come here who live in the neighborhood and through the library they can really see the greater city. And um, even though people go to school and use that as a means of integration, uh, I don't think it works as well as the library. Schools have a, um, a particular kind of purpose and people are, you know, fed through a kind of a system. But the library is so open and so free and it serves so many purposes. People can come in here and really see that this is a real point in the connections with the city and the state, the country and the world. It's like, uh, for me, it's, it was like, uh, you know, the internet before we even, you know, thought of such a concept. I think this, this library, uh, you know, should have the, the state-of-the-art uh, furniture, materials that, uh, that it needs. It, we shouldn't have to rely on, um, on any donations of used furniture. We, we need to have the best for this library. The, the building that is being retrofitted is this absolutely beautiful building that's been around for many, many years here in, in San Francisco and in the Mission. And we just need to make sure that it's stocked properly and that it has the furniture that it, that it deserves. It's not just benefiting the, the, the people of this area, it's benefiting children, and children are our future. And if children have the right resources and the right training and the right computers and the right books, it's certainly going to be to everyone's advantage, the better educated and the more well-read the children become. Just want to make sure that everybody does their best to contribute. And it doesn't matter if it's a, a dollar or 50 cents, because every little bit will help build the fund that will make our library the best library that there is. And that's what we're hoping for. We've done a lot of work in the city to, to uh, rebuild the Mission Branch Library. So we now finally have uh, the structure. It's completed. We're ready to open the door. And for us to really bring that library alive, we now have to have the funds for the books, the tables, the chairs, the computers, lighting, the things that really make that library part of the community. The community's ready. The school kids, and there's more school kids in the mission than any other district of the city, they're ready to go into that library. 
they're in the temporary quarters, they're jammed in there, and they really want to go back to their new rebuilt library. And it's now up to all of us, step forward, step up to the plate, uh, and, and make that library come alive. We need everyone's help for all those things like books and tables and chairs. Citibank is pleased to play a part in the renovation of the Mission Branch Library, an important center for empowerment and education in San Francisco's Hispanic community. This is important to us because we believe that a free public library is a fundamental value of a democratic society, offering equal opportunity through equal access to learning to all who choose to enter its doors. Speaking as the proud son of a South American mother myself, I am personally thrilled that Citibank, my company, has contributed to the Mission Branch Library, further enriching and celebrating our multi-ethnic community. Yo estoy muy orgulloso que mi compañía Citibank ha elegido de participar en un proyecto tan importante para nuestra comunidad de habla hispana y para la comunidad en general. Gracias. Thank you. Please join me in supporting the Mission Library Fund. You can give your time, you can give your money. Together we will make it happen. See you at the grand opening in May of 1999. Want to learn how to read? Want to help someone else learn to read? Contact Project Read of the San Francisco Public Library at 557-4388. Project Read is an adult literacy program that provides volunteer one-to-one -one tutoring for adult learners. Project Read's support of tutors and students includes tutor orientation and training, continuing education workshops for tutors and students, reading diagnostics for students, family programs, and referrals to classroom instruction at community college centers and to other agencies in the community. There are many ways you can help adults achieve their personal reading goals. Call Project Read to find out how. Learn to read or be a reading tutor. Phone 557 Friends for Life volunteers bring the riches of the San Francisco Public Library to people who can no longer visit the library themselves. Friends for Life volunteers provide a link between the San Francisco Public Library and people with AIDS or HIV disease. If you would like to be a Friends for Life volunteer or you are in need of the services Friends for Life provides, call 557 43 5-2 for more information. Thanks for watching at the Public Library here on CityWatch Cable Channel 54. You can catch at the Public Library Monday mornings from 9.30 to 10.30 a.m. and from 12.30 to 1.30 p.m. Friday evenings from 8 to 9 p.m. and Saturdays from 12 noon to 1 p.m. See you next time.